all living things, from plants to people, are made of cells. Cells are as diverse as they are numerous, and it's this diversity that allows organisms, like us, to breathe, to eat, to adapt to our environments. They're made up of organelles, proteins, and other molecules. And at the heart of cellular behavior are these molecular interactions. How these various pieces fit together, how they behave and do their jobs. But even with all the computing power available on Earth, we still couldn't accurately simulate the complex interactions within a cell, a protein, even an amino acid. Their constituent molecules are too complex. Tens, hundreds, thousands of atoms, all with their own internal energies and governed by strange phenomena at the quantum level. With our current computing methods, it would take more transistors than the number of atoms in our galaxy to accurately describe them. But what if a possible solution could be found in nature itself, in the mind-bending world of quantum mechanics? In 1982, famed physicist Richard Feynman stated, nature isn't classical, and if you want to make a simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical. What if we could use the laws that govern our universe to accurately describe it? and develop quantum-based processors to drive the next generation of computing. It's not easy, as we've learned over the past 30 years of research. That's because at the quantum scale, particles behave in ways that are completely counterintuitive to everyday experience. While traditional computers rely on bits, the ones and zeros that store and transmit information. Quantum computers use qubits, quantum bits that function at the atomic level, and can be in a superposition state of both one and zero at the same time. Now, that sounds a little bizarre, but it's these strange quantum effects that allow us to conceive of a completely new way of approaching computing, if we can capture it. Because quantum mechanics is a fundamentally different way of understanding our universe, using it in computation means manipulating incredibly delicate information. That's Dr. Jerry Chow, manager of experimental quantum computing at IBM Research. There are three critical challenges to making this kind of computing a reality. Creating and controlling qubits, preserving them, and linking them together so that we can start processing. A few decades ago, this was impossible. But with years of research here at IBM, we've created real qubits. And they're superconducting, made out of materials that need to be kept colder than outer space in order to preserve them and they can be run with electrical signals, allowing them to be easily controlled. With this progress in control and preservation, we've started linking qubits together to create multi-qubit systems. They're modular so that they can theoretically be scaled up in the future. We've reached an important building block where we can begin to simulate simple chemistry, like hydrogen bonding. And we're now at a point where we can shift our focus from is this possible to build to what could we do with this. While we're still in the early days of this technology, we can begin to ask what might we be able to do with a larger system, say 50, 100 qubits? What if we could simulate elements of our natural world? What happens in a cell at a molecular or even an atomic scale? What could we learn about how they function, about how they behave and interact with other molecules? What might we then learn about how cells communicate and how that affects our bodies? Could we develop more personalized drugs or better therapies for diseases? How could we work with other disciplines and industries to improve human health, understand our natural environment, perhaps even learn about the origins of life itself. 
what might we find on the frontiers? Join us there 